So Tux, this one's gonna be a tough one. I don't know how I'm gonna explain this in any kind of succinct way. This is the weirdest motherboard review ever. B450 Aorus Pro Wi-Fi for, you know, AM4 CPUs from AMD. This motherboard is great, but it's also weird. It's got a, sort of some dark secrets. Well, I mean, not really. It's, it's a little bit clickbaity, so there's some controversy. I mean, we'll just dive right into the controversy, I guess. The VRM situation. I think the VRM on the box is labeled like hybrid, uh, hybrid eight plus three digital PWM design. Uh, marketing comp, like the marketing wing of these motherboard companies are trying to like shift the definition of a phase. And phases are normally completely isolated from one another. Think about like if the CPU is a semi, you know, a fully loaded semi that has to haul information and it doesn't have its own engine. It relies on, on people to pull it along. Then you've got, you know, it's the, the world's strongest man competition and the world's strongest man is like trying to pull along the semi. And if you've got more of them, they can get up to speed quicker. But you know, when you've got like 17 strong men in front of a semi, some of them are like pulling diagonally. They're not pulling straight ahead. So you lose more in efficiency. I don't know, the analogy sort of started to fall apart, but you know, there is such a thing as too much VRM and there is such a thing as not enough VRM and power phases and regulation and, and that sort of thing. So this is not really, and it's really, it's a four phase instead of an eight phase on the one side and then the, the graphics SOC whatever is uh, three phase. So it's really, it's really three plus four, which is similar to some of the other motherboards, but they did actually double up on components. So when you look at the layout around the VRM, it looks really beefy, but it doesn't actually have separate phases, but it can still deliver a crazy amount of power to the CPU. The problem is that all of the extra VRM circuitry because they're not truly isolated phases. You get that situation where the, the strong men are not pulling the semi in parallel, meaning that they're sort of pulling diagonally a little bit against each other. And so that ends up producing excess heat or friction between the elements of the machinery there. So I, you know, the, uh, the EEs in the audience are cringing really hard right now, but I couldn't think of a, a cleaner, easier way to explain it. But, and I don't normally do this, but if you look at some of the other more modest VRM implementations like the MSI Tomahawk, I mean, it's a four plus two. It's a really, it is a rock dumb simple four plus two. And you look at that and it's like, oh, this, you know, that VRM is trash. How are you gonna do four plus two? No, Ryzen doesn't use a lot of power at all. It's very, very power efficient. It's a little bit of a bathtub curve when you start pushing it past four gigahertz in that it consumes way more electricity for only slightly more speed. But you know, the AMD CPUs are not designed for something that's past 4.1, 4.2 gigahertz. Really, I mean, AMD's gonna sell every man machines, not high-end Insano machines. Well, you go Threadripper or something like that for that. But these are every man desktop machines. And this is the every man desktop motherboard. The B450 chipset, is aimed at more cost conscious people or people that don't need the features of the higher end X470 boards for the AM4 platform. And other than the VRM situation on this board, this is actually one of my favorite boards for B450. The HDMI port on this motherboard is the only one that I tested with Raven Ridge that was actually doing 4K60 output correctly without cutting out and being weird. I mean, Raven Ridge 4K60 output, I mean, I guess technically you should be able to do HDMI, but I think there's something weird with licensing and HDMI because like on the Intel platform, you should theoretically be able to do 4K60 there as well, but you can't. But some motherboard vendors have a DisplayPort to HDMI adapter that they actually solder onto the motherboard to give you HDMI 2.0. And I'm not sure if that's what's going on here, but 4K, 60 Hertz, FreeSync, HDMI, it's okay on this board. So let's talk about the rear IO shield. It has built-in rear IO. The built-in rear IO is pretty cool. It's like a higher end feature for this board. And I mean, like normally higher end motherboards have built-in IO shield. Well, this is B450, which is not really like super high end, but 
it's a higher end feature. And so again, we sort of see the trend, the pattern on this motherboard is higher end features, even though this is more of a mid-range, everyman sort of motherboard. All of the USB ports in the back are USB 3. So, you know, some USB 2 ports from some other boards, they're all USB 3 here, including two USB 3 Gen 2 10 gigabit per second ports, one type A and one type C through the uh, chipset. We've also got HDMI and DVI on the HDMI port, as I mentioned, you know, HDMI 2.0. Then we've also got our Intel LAN and a Realtek ALC 1220 based audio codec. Yes, this is the first B450 board I've seen that includes the ALC 1220, the higher end Realtek codec, including optical SPDIF out, toss link if you want to call it that, but You've got the full 7.1 outfit, you know, the full Monty in terms of sound output, sound componentry. You've got the higher end-ish WiMA audio capacitor. So there's at least something here for the, you know, audio output, which is again, a higher end feature. Now this motherboard has two M.2 slots. One of those is wired directly into the CPU. So you get full PCI Express 3.0 bandwidth. And then our PCI Express by 16 slot, which is PCI Express by 16 all the time. Well, I mean, unless you're using a Raven Ridge CPU, in which case it's PCI Express by eight, because that's a limitation of the CPU, not the motherboard. Then we have two more by 16 slots. One of those is a PCI Express by four 2.0 through the chipset. The other one, even though it's PCI Express by 16 physical, that's only PCI Express by one, and it's always PCI Express by one. Both of the M.2 have heat shields. So you can use that. Again, it's a higher end feature. Some people like heat shields. I myself could live without them. If you, you know, maybe they could only include one to save a dollar on the cost of the motherboard. I don't know, aesthetically, maybe if you're going for, you know, an RGB build, aesthetically, maybe it would be there. This motherboard does have a lot of RGB options. You get the digital and the analog 50-50 headers, but it's also configurable. You can configure five volt or 12 volt operation through a jumper on the motherboard for your RGB headers. So if RGB is important to you, this motherboard has more features than most for the RGB end of things. All right, let's talk memory support. Memory support on this board was better than most of the other B450 boards. I was able to get 3600 to boot and be stable with a little bit of fiddling. 40, uh, 3400 and 3200 were immediately viable out of the box with my G-Skill DDR4 4000 kit. Now keep in mind, I mean, I think this is obvious, but I have to point this out. This is our test bench. I don't always get to talk about our test bench. Our test bench has this you know plexiglass cover and the airflow the only airflow is just from our 220 millimeter fans here which is through our cooler master 240 r 240 millimeter all-in-one closed-loop radiator so you got some airflow around the vrm area but you know this is basically it this ddr4 4, 4000 kit i've had you know 3733 3800 on the 2700 x cpu that i use for testing on the uh there's a ryzen 3 2200g in there that i can do uh, I think the highest that I've been able to get on that is 3800. I'd have to double check my notes. But with this particular CPU, I tested uh, 3200 and 3200 was solid across the board on this. And the, the motherboard only advertises 2933, but 3200 is completely fine on this board with everything that I threw at it. Um, I'm using GCL Trident Z. I've also got the Sniper X in the 3400 and 3600 varieties. The 3400 was plug and play, the 3600 required a little bit of fiddling because it boots up at 2133 and with 3600 I did have to up the voltage a little bit, uh, system on chip voltage, but basically it was okay. The DDR4 4000 of course doesn't work at 4000 with anything that I have, even X470. So G-Skill did show off some DDR4 4000 that was running on X470 at Computex, but hey, you know, they've got the unicorn chip. And remember the memory controller is built into the CPU. So it's not just board dependent, it's also CPU dependent, but I have CPUs and RAM that are known to work at those frequencies, which is what I use for testing. Generally more layers on the printed circuit board leads to better memory compatibility and more noise immunity and, and that sort of thing. But I digress. Now the VRM situation, Peak VRM temperature on this VR motherboard was a startlingly high, like 82 degrees C. I'm not really doing super scientific testing. I do have a uh, passive laser probe as well as a Mylar sensor, and it was high enough that it's like, mm, I better double check this. Because on the other B450 boards that I've tested so far, uh, the VRMs didn't get anywhere near that hot. And so like, you know, I mentioned the, the MSI Tomahawk, which is, I mean, it's like, you look at it and it's just like, it doesn't look complicated, but it's actually probably the best VRM situation for the CPUs that are actually on the market today. 
So you can't always judge a book by its cover. <laughs> God now. <laughs> That said, the, the, you know, the VRM, honestly, it's not terrible. It gets warm, it's gonna need airflow. You're not gonna wanna put it in a case that doesn't have airflow. But even with this very pedestrian setup with the plexiglass, it was fine. It didn't overheat or do anything weird. It did get up to like 82, at worst case scenario, leaving it on overnight, doing terrible things. But under normal usage and, you know, leaving it running fire strike in a loop over and over again, nothing bad happened. There was no throttling, crashing, or anything like that, so. So yeah, this one's been a weird one for me. <laughs> In terms of other connectivity on the motherboard, it's got six, six gigabit per second SATA ports, four of them are right angle, which is always appreciated. There are five four pin fan headers, two of which are shared because of the CPU. It's like you can do a CPU push-pull configuration or CPU water pump and then CPU fan configuration. Linux support, in terms of Linux support, I was very surprised there was not a launch day BIOS update for this motherboard. So this motherboard is running a little behind in terms of latest available Agiza. That said, Linux compatibility was great because Realtek ALC 1222, nothing new there. Intel Gigabit NIC, nothing new there. And the memory compatibility and memory support. So a little bit better than average on the B450. So in terms of like features for this motherboard and like higher end features, a plus for Gigabyte. VRM situation, mm, C, C minus. I mean, the ASUS board is worse, so there's that. Uh, so like C, C minus for the VRM situation, but you know, LAN, onboard peripherals, M.2 slots, A plus across the board. It's a, it's a really, it's really, it's an enthusiast board in B450. I and mean, unless you're gonna run dual graphics cards or do something crazy with like, like IOMMU, it's totally, like it's it's completely fine. Oh, that reminds me, IOMMU groups because it's B450. You don't really have good group isolation, so the NVMe slot, the first NVMe slot, is in its own group. The X16 slot is in its own group. The peripherals off of the CPU are in their own group. Everything else through the chipset is in one IOMMU group. So this would not be a good motherboard if you're going to do like GPU virtualization, GPU pass through, or anything like that. I mean, you're you're asking you could, but it's not worth your, you should get a better motherboard to, to, do, to do that, I think. So in conclusion, is there really any reason you should not buy this motherboard because of the whole like VRM kerfuffle? I, you know, Gigabyte has uh, corrected the website to, to for the correct specifications for the uh, motherboard. It is better than what they advertise it as now. It's like a four plus three configuration. This is a much better setup than a four plus three configuration because you have more components involved and theoretically the longevity should be better. But that said, you know, a simpler VRM design overall may have been a better design. But in terms of the other features of the board, it has a really, it has a higher end audio setup. It has a higher end LAN setup. It has a higher end like PCB in terms of like memory speed traces, I guess, because I was able to get my memory to work at faster speeds than some of the other B450 boards. You know, some of those features are reserved for the higher end X470 boards, but overall the verdict on this board is that it's, it's pretty good. So <laughs> don't let the VRMs be the reason you don't buy the motherboard. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and if you want to yell terrible things at me, because of my opinions, well, you can hang out in the level one forums. If you decide to build a system with this, hey, post your pictures, show us off. Show, show it off to us in the level one forums. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and I'll see you there.